Hello, everybody. Uh, nice to welcome you on another meeting on uh, what the temporary regional offices of ESPD are doing regarding the crisis in Ukraine. Uh, my name is Maya Luniba, I'm the Secretary General of ESPD, and today uh, we've gathered uh, experts from uh, all over Europe to uh, share and to discuss the uh, different sides of the humanitarian crisis when it comes to people with disabilities in the refugee crisis uh, caused by the war in Ukraine. Um, I have to say that some of the things that uh, we'll discuss today, unfortunately, we've already mentioned them in our webinars in March, in April, and then in May. And unfortunately, we may have to mention them again in September, as some of the challenges that local organizations are uh, giving us as feedback and as, as recommendations, we've already seen them uh, before. Since the beginning of the war, ESP had a very active role on uh, trying to uh, bring the public focus, uh, both of authorities in, here in Brussels and then national authorities that people with disabilities are affected by, by the crisis in a different way and that there should be uh, measures taken in consideration uh, that uh, uh, it's not enough just to, to be sympathetic. It's not enough just to say that uh, uh, we hope for a better time, but it actually is a matter of, of actions. And these actions should come, should come now. Uh, most of the things that I'm sure you've already heard from uh, our webinars and from our members are regarding the lack of financial tools. And this has been a reoccurring topic, a reoccurring challenge that uh, uh, civil society organizations share uh, still, the lack of financial tools is visible in the region, and still, even authorities admit that the, the hit is actually taken by services and by uh, uh, charity organizations when it comes to the first response and when it comes to uh, community inclusion. So uh, we hope that this uh, webinar today brings a few new points and also brings more clarity on how some of the challenges in different countries are tackled because, yes, there are some challenges which are actually uh, tackled and there are some good practices that we'll share today as well. And without any further ado, I would like to give uh, the floor to our team for regional office. Thank you, uh, Maya. Um, so I will try and guide this conversation uh, through with our guests and partners uh, today. And so we have uh, representatives and speakers from uh, Ukraine, Slovakia, Bulgaria, Hungary, Moldova, and the Netherlands. Uh, and these are uh, the countries in which our temporary regional offices are placed. And what we will try and hear uh, today is what are what is the situation today. Uh, five months on from the uh, invasion uh, of Ukraine, uh, and um, also what are the main current challenges. So when we be talking about what's happened over the last three months, it's about what are the current challenges and what is happening uh, right now in these countries. So let's start uh, already quickly. Uh, let's go to Ukraine. Uh, Tatiana Mituk, I hope I pronounced that uh, well enough. Um, you are based in uh, Lviv in Ukraine. Um, can you tell us a bit about the situation uh, for your organization in Ukraine and also what are the current uh, challenges? Yes, uh, thanks for inviting me. Um, uh, I'm Tatiana. Uh, and uh, uh, it is difficult to be now in Ukraine, to be honest, because uh, uh, we have real war and uh, we have really uh, every day and every night, uh, multiple um, times, sounds of air alarms. And us, uh, after that, uh, these sounds, uh, we have sometimes uh, new uh, bombs and uh, new deaths. And uh, uh, our staff, our personnel, and our clients, our families uh, is uh, totally impressed. Uh, and continue, continuing stress, yes. But we understand now that uh, war uh, will not end soon, as we hope for, and we should uh, to try uh, to our best uh, try to live, yes. <laughs> And uh, my uh, my centers uh, my center general 
uh, typically um, uh, provide uh, different uh, new for the services like early intervention services, like daycare uh, for children and for adults, and uh, supportive living uh, services and functional rehabilitation. And now, what we could do uh, is to continue to provide this type of services not only for our local, uh, local families and children with disability, but for our uh, internally displaced, displaced people. Uh, in, and uh, it is uh, huge support for them to, uh, to get uh, such type of services for uh, children with disabilities. Uh, one and uh, second, um, second issue. Uh, what is problematic? It is uh, where could the families live? Because in reality, it is uh, uh, coming the autumn of winter, and uh, uh, in Ukraine too, we have problem uh, to, to find the appropriate uh, available home, uh, room, just shelter, uh, shelter for the families and children with disability. Um, certainly uh, issues, uh, it uh, is um, to understand that before uh, war, uh, my, my, uh, my center and uh, specialist uh, wouldn't uh, uh, support uh, uh, such institutions like um, uh, state um, facilities or a boarding school. But now we are in a new situation, situation when many children with disability are displaced from west or part of Ukraine to east part and to this type of institution. Yeah. From east to west. From east to west. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, and um, I would say that uh, all uh, all uh, this type of institution, uh, which uh, before war uh, was in process of reformating, of uh, getting new type of services, now it's really full with uh, children and adults with disabilities. And our task would be. Uh, uh, to help the personnel to get um, a little bit new approach and uh, a new, not new, but a good approach to organizing uh, life of uh, uh, many children with disability, children with disability uh, in this institution. Before we know, before, uh, before uh, war, we know uh, such type of institutions uh, uh, doesn't have good quality of um, authorities uh, like uh, Soviet uh, approach. Yes, and now we uh, are in uh, we are in a um, situation. It's strange, but good change, uh, good chance uh, to change uh, uh, for, uh, the approach uh, specialist in these institutions to to organize uh, their uh, work. Um, and uh, may, uh, I think the last point, uh, it could be the statement that in these situations, uh, this situation, any institution uh, could uh, give um, all the services which family uh, is needed uh, totally. And we need to cooperate uh, each other, yes. Um, doctors need to cooperate with social workers and uh, state institutions uh, should cooperate with NGO. Uh, it, uh, and uh, cooperation is always a big problem for uh, Ukraine, yes, because of our past Soviet, uh, Soviet past. But now it, uh, this situation just pushed us uh, to cooperate uh, each other if you want to help. And uh, for example, uh, our, for this moment, we have a big uh, project uh, uh, with UNICEF 
uh, and we try to coordinate our uh, our services with uh, other seven regions, best regions of Ukraine, uh, to uh, to think uh, to think and to provide good coordinated services for families uh, with uh, children with disabilities. And um, in, in reality, it is uh, again a good chance to uh, establish uh, cooperation tradition uh, in uh, this field. Yeah. Um, it's strange, but it could be uh, could be good chance uh, uh, now um, of putting ourselves to the limit and maybe go further in uh, better quality of services uh, for children and for adults. Thank you very much, uh, Tatiana, and thank you for coming to Brussels. Which is obviously difficult uh, in a current situation, but also especially for you and all your colleagues, for the commitment that you have to supporting people with disabilities uh, during this period of war, which surely is not is not easy. I might come back to you with a few questions afterwards uh, around what you what you said, um, and now I will uh, come to Rukesh Govinda. Uh, uh, more or less. Uh, I'm sorry, you were reading your, your surname. Um, in Slovakia, uh, you are based in the east of Slovakia, close to the border with Ukraine. Um, what's the situation uh, right now in terms of supporting uh, Ukrainians with disability in the borders? And also, what do you see as the, the current two, three main challenges? For now, I think it's uh, uh, for now, For now, I think the majority of the country's organizations we could see less and less people uh, coming. And uh, that's forming what we are doing in the sense that it's also more difficult in the sense that people are more spread. They are also re-immigrating within the country from uh, third emergency shelters and uh, almost into something that is more, uh, more uh, durable. And uh, we can see in Slovakia that many of the families, including communities, people will be are moving to the western uh, more uh, economically stronger uh, regions, which is a uh, new work for them, but also then for the organization supporting them. Uh, we as an umbrella organization of the Forum, and our main uh, main task now is the uh, IOM support uh, team, where we want to reach IOM LCD in an organization of migration. In Slovakia, it's uh, split people with disability and their carers. Gary adults, they get uh, support from the international organization of, uh, for migration. And if they are if the person with disability is a child, very similar scheme is uh, it's done by UNICEF. And the uh, UNICEF part is done by other one organization, the IOM part is done uh, by CCO Forum. And uh, implementing that is uh, our main task now, trying to get the money to the people. But that also brings the questions of uh, at uh, we expecting around 80,000 people to be, to be supported global, that would mean around 2,000 people are uh, disability. At the moment, we are 500. So I think our main task fund will be rolled out, will be reached out for to make sure that everybody, even if there is a language bond problem, if there is some kind of also mindset problem in the sense that we do not want to get rid of, do not want to be also diagnosed. Uh, we'll be able to benefit from them. And then the last maybe challenge for us is the opportunity. It should be to be spend our project budgets and help everyone uh, who needs help in the maximum way, or should we be preparing for autumn? Maybe think, uh, maybe expecting another wave when people from Ukraine realizing okay, it's not possible to live here anymore, and the winter is coming. Will then maybe reach our uh, our regions again. So that's uh, cash support, uh, mapping out and reach out, and then trying to prepare for uh, for autumn would be our main uh, turn this. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. Um, I'll come back to you with some questions that I'll ask uh, later. Then let's go to uh, Bulgaria, uh, Magdalena. Um, how is the situation in, in Batna, in the northeast of uh, Bulgaria? Uh, for me, um... 
So we have all refugees and coming and returning uh, uh, but nobody is collecting. There is data about the number of refugees coming, but there is no data about the number of people with disabilities uh, who are in the country, which is important when they are placed and displaced. It's important to know information is uh, collected mainly and supposed to be made by volunteers and NGOs. Um, so they have the people uh, with disabilities have the problem that. There is no recognition of their disability documents. Uh, uh, even if they have disability documents, they are not uh, uh, recognized. And if, uh, if they have to uh, have Bulgarian uh, disability documents, they need to go to a special commission. So this process is very long and complicated. Like for, it might take six months. And but even if they uh, their documents are even if they have Bulgarian documents for disability, they still will not have access to social uh, benefits like uh, Bulgarian citizens because uh, there is no clause about refugees with uh, temporary protection in our law. So legislation of it should be changed. Another major issue is that uh, people don't have uh, access to general practitioners, although. Um, it is an amendment was made in our law. They have the right for uh, general practitioners, to, but they, they are not people. Uh, really, the doctors cannot don't enroll them because of number of reasons, etc. So people who are with only illnesses uh, and should be taken medical care are left uh, unsupported. There is no uh, good access to health care because for some health conditions, even our own country cannot provide good uh, proper care for their citizens. No access to medical food. And so no access for religious utilities for space, medical devices and supplies again this is connected to recognition of their disabilities. What we have done uh, so far, uh, I mean, my organization uh, uh, provides boxes with toys, uh, boxes with toys for children uh, who are in uh, accommodated in the hotels and organized for some uh, group activities with kids. We provide psychological support to families and uh, we partner with uh, some pediatricians who uh, do uh, medical examinations. Thank you, Magdalena. Um, I think important to hear about the, the, the challenges in certifying your disability in a certain way, which then allows you to have access to, to different services and support that you have. In practice, in EU law, it should be the case by now, it's possible, but in, the, in, in, actually in theory, it should be possible, but in practice, we're seeing uh, difficulties. I might come back to you later with a question uh, around that uh, as well. Now, let's go uh, to uh, maybe. Moldova, <laughs> Lumina, uh, Kyrgyzhan. Um, you've been very active from the start supporting uh, Ukrainians with disabilities. Uh, many of them have, have moved to, to, to Moldova. Um, five months on, more or less. Uh, what are you doing now and uh, what are the main challenges uh, this summer? Hello, everyone. In fact, the uh, case of Moldova followed uh, solidarity bill from the government of the Republic of Moldova and uh, was actively involved in the uh, UNHCR intersectoral coordination group. We advocated in the country for a mainstreaming disability in emergency response. And uh, as a result, we have a disability task force now uh, from um, it's composed about 30 representatives of uh, UN agencies, NGOs, government uh, uh, representatives, uh, um, centers for uh, accommodation of uh, refugees. So uh, the feasibility task force is led by Eastern Moldova and uh, we twice a month to put on the agenda important issues for 
discuss and to find the solutions or uncover the needs or the problems. Um, you also established the reference mechanism to available services through hotline service and file service. The hotline service uh, service provided by Jason Moldova and paid by the government is a special service visible. And uh, after the first week the uh, war started, we decided to uh, make it available for uh, for um, refugees with disabilities. And still now about uh, 160 or more persons uh, received uh, the necessary information and uh, were referred to different services hotline services. Then uh, the bio team is a, a small team now, uh, worn by three specialists, one doctor, one, one social assistant, and the case manager who um, conduct a needs assessment, uh, design an intervention plan, and provide support uh, services to people with uh, disabilities, or refer them to other available uh, services who are not able to provide them. What they uh, what they need about four hundred fifty more persons uh, has been um, have been assisted by mobile team. But for now, they received um, food packages, special food packages for instance for uh, a diabetic or for small children with different uh, health and, uh, issues. Hygienic process, uh, uh, consultation of our doctor on referral to specialized uh, service. As uh, Magdalene has said, uh, the access to medical services is problematic. But, uh, for instance, uh, UNICEF provided um, about, uh, transferred about uh, 15,000 euro to uh, national uh, medical insurance house to cover children with uh, disabilities. So now children with disabilities have access to all type of uh, services, immunization, complex investigations, and so on. It's not the case for adults. Here is a big problem accessing uh, uh, specialized diagnostic services to uh, have access to. Uh, medical devices, assistive uh, devices. We provide by doing uh, this by doing constant fundraising to, um, to buy medicines and assistive devices, medical devices, and to uh, provide them. Uh, them. Um, of course, the main uh, challenge is the uh, lack of uh, exact data on number of people with uh, disabilities in the country. According to the multi sector needs assessment uh, conducted under the UNHCR, 4% uh, uh, of people um, of refugees that are staying in Moldova are persons with uh, different types of uh, disabilities. And now in the country, you have about uh, 55,000 uh, refugees, half a million persons past our country. This is about 90% of our entire population, uh, 2.6 million in, in over and half a million now. Uh, Kisto Mahova started to collect data on uh, persons with uh, disabilities or a uh, uh, special uh, ship uh, in order to understand the profile of persons with disabilities uh, to, to know uh, how many women, how many men, uh, children, adults, and how they relate what type of disabilities they have, the degree of disability, and uh, where they are located, because we are providing this in uh, refugee accommodation centers, but also in families, part of refugees, uh, rent uh, apartments, and houses uh, in, the, in the countries. And uh, the quality of data improved, but the problem is only few NGOs provide this uh, uh, data to, to us. 
And the main important point in this data collection is the type of assistance provided and uncovered needs in order to um, solve the, 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 the problems that, um, that emerge. Our uh, infrastructure is very poor if um, um, take into consideration the non-accessible environment in Moldova um, and also the shortage of staff to provide the necessary uh, services in, in communities and in refugee accommodations, accommodation centers. And also, Kista Moldova needs to uh, extend the mobile team to hire people in order to uh, cover uh, many locations where uh, these persons are uh, displaced. Thank if you, you have Thank other you. questions, this is in short. <laughs> I have a lot of questions <laughs> indeed, but uh, I will come back to that maybe a little bit later. Now we can come to Hungary. Uh, um, what is the situation in Hungary regarding people with disabilities and what are you doing uh, to support them? The Hungarian government has been providing support for refugees from Ukraine in cooperation with uh, municipalities, the charity organization, NGOs, and churches. Um, at the six border crossing points, there are uh, supporting stations where they provide uh, tutoring, uh, housing, and uh, any other kind for people. The Hungarian state railways provide free uh, transportation for, for persons. The border countries and also to Budapest, to the capital. And we have your sense that to the next group that was assembled. To this moment, uh, 800,000 uh, uh, people has entered the country. And uh, from this number, uh, 600,000 people went uh, further to the Western European countries. Uh, and at this moment, uh, only a few hundred uh, persons uh, enter the country, and most of them uh, go further to the other country. Uh, around uh, 200,000 persons stayed for longer time in Hungary at this moment. And from this amount, around 140,000 persons applied, has applied for a residence permit. And around 25,000 persons has applied, have applied for asylum and a permanent residence permit. There are around 35,000 persons who, uh, uh, at this moment, uh, they are in Hungary, but they haven't decided yet if they would like to stay there for a longer time or if they would like to go further or back to their country. For the people who decided to stay in Hungary, the governments, the churches, the NGOs, the charity organizations provide them housing and medical uh, care. The Hungarian government provides the opportunity for the children to, to go to the education system, kindergarten, and the schools, and for the parents to take a job. The family who take uh, families who take uh, jobs uh, receive the housing benefits uh, in uh, 150 euros per month. At this moment, the registered persons with the disabilities from Ukraine are 130. 
and they receive uh, housing, uh, development, and then medical care in the building or in the service providers, uh, uh, service provider system. Unfortunately, it's really hard to gather exact data uh, about how many persons with disabilities uh, have entered the country. TROs uh, are uh, uh, is ongoing uh, connection with the government and receive a regular report from the Ministry of Interior. And this is the ongoing collection with the NGOs, with the charity organization, with churches to provide support to the target. And the TRO provide the information on the situation, uh, 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 on the situation of uh, persons with the disabilities in Ukraine. Meetings, organize meetings and the conference. And we try to provide solution in the situation where it is we try to do our best uh, to provide support uh, for persons with disabilities. The Hungary Yemen government provides uh, the opportunity for 130 children to use the medical care uh, in Hungary and to get into the, the medical uh, health system. And the Hungarian government uh, bought uh, mobile houses for the persons who would like to move in Ukraine from the western country to the eastern part. And these mobile houses can be transferred at any time into Ukraine if they require it. And the, the Hungarian government can start the transportation anytime and transport. The main challenges only a few percentage of uh, children using the Hungarian education system uh, in those families who are staying longer time in Hungary. It's only the 10 percent of the children who stay in Hungary. And more than 25,000 children uh, the if you can speak a bit louder, those of you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, the other challenge that uh, that the the persons who have any kind of disabilities and who are in Hungary uh, are hidden, so we don't have any information. Has lots of information on their disabilities. And the parents uh, don't want to use the opportunity to have this medical examination. Around that, which kind of disabilities uh, their children have. Uh, and the Ukrainian children has uh, no uh, any kind of vaccination. Uh, and the parents uh, don't want to. Uh, it's like a TVC or small boats and And uh, it's clear that it will appear again and we like. The, the families who applied for a residence permit to can make the decision. They are looking for a house to understand and they would like to go home. But uh, during this time, they don't take any job in house where they, they don't send their children. And uh, the children with disabilities has not got any support or development. And the financial support will expire uh, in 
It should be the mayor of the house. What we hope uh, from this cooperation here also. Yes, we can set the card for nobody to see the we would like to achieve that together with the politicians and the makers to find the common solution to support the persons with disabilities in Ukraine. Yes, and she hope that there will be new new funds for the support. Thank you, Henrietta. Um, thank you very much. Um, now let's move a bit more away from the, the border countries to the Netherlands, who have done, I think, a very impressive work comparatively to support people with disabilities, and that's in large part down to Eric. So, Eric, um, five months on, uh, what is the situation uh, and what are the main barriers moving forward? Thank you very much, Thomas, for these very kind words. Uh, actually, we are we have two legs there, one leg in the Netherlands, another leg in the very stretched out to the Ukraine. And that, that's also why we were able to uh, uh, receive uh, quickly quite a, a significant group of, of people with disability refugees from uh, from Ukraine. In total, we have uh, uh, been able to provide housing for four four hundred refugees and their and their caregivers. So more or less uh, one third of them are really people with disabilities and others are the caregivers. But being in the Netherlands, we, we have found out that a lot of, of the parents or family members also have their uh, quite severe, sometimes medical issues. So uh, there is a huge uh, need for support in the Netherlands. So uh, for this group, um, obviously the situation is very complicated, very stressful. Uh, very insecure, I must say, for uh, the refugees. They don't know uh, if they can go back to Ukraine, when they can go back to Ukraine. But the same insecurity comes for those who provide the, the housing and the services. So we are, in that sense, we are in the in the in the same boat, <laughs> uh, not knowing how long this will take. Will will there become new refugees? At the moment, we have no new influx. Some few uh, of, of our uh, beneficiaries that have returned, but that's really maybe two, two families total. Um, they live in the Netherlands at the premises of service providers for people with disabilities, so most, uh, mostly so they have adequate housing, uh, adequate facilities, uh, but, and they have rights uh, for social services, medical services, educational services, all, all nice. But then, in reality, regulations are very complicated in the Netherlands. For us, as Dutch, it's already extremely complicated. So uh, for uh, Ukraine refugees, it's just too much. Uh, but not only for the refugees, also what we face is that a lot of people in the municipalities have no clue uh, about the reg which regulations to apply, neither uh, the insurance companies, the health insurance companies, so uh, there is a lot of, uh, let's say, resistance or, or reluctance or fear of doing something because they don't know if they would pay for something if that they will be compensated. So it's sort of getting a bit stuck on that level to uh, counter that uh, situation. Uh, as sort of feel that we have uh, very frequent meetings with our Ministry of Social and uh, not uh, security and um, uh, uh who coordinates the, 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 uh, the influx of, of refugees in the Netherlands. And so we, we have really have been able to bring our experiences on, on that level and regulations now have, have, have uh, changed and made it more clear. So hopefully now, now finally uh, things will go more smooth. Anyhow, people do get medical services. Uh, there are a lot of 
uh, doctors uh, and, and, and social services who simply provide services without knowing if they ever will be paid. But um, yeah, so the situation now is getting a bit more stable. Um, what we face is that on the national level, there is target. Target of, uh, it was uh, the first three months, something like 50,000 refugees to receive 50,000 refugees from the Netherlands. Now it is 75,000. We have now the, the 50,000, so there's room now for 25,000 more, but there is no target, no indication, no, no motivation to the, to, from EU to the national governments to, to receive also, let's say, vulnerable people, not only people with disabilities, also people with, with mental problems, uh, elderly. Uh, well, you call them also dis dis disabled, but there is no target, there's no incentive. There's so my government, and it was in, in uh, Parliament uh, recently, the discussion that uh, the government says, well, we, we are doing what we are asked. And it's receiving 60,000 or 75,000 refugees. And yeah, so we're, we're fine. Well, I'm a bit exaggerating, but in essence, it, it, that's the point. So that, that is uh, something that I think really should be thought about it. And, and I don't know how to change that, but there's need some kind of incentive for, for the countries that they also should focus on the uh, more vulnerable uh, groups because they definitely need special uh, support and more support. Our Ukraine leg, uh, there we are continuing uh, looking for funds in, in the next support the regular uh, uh, service. So there is a um, uh, because the focus on the refugees takes away the focus on hey but the regular services the typical services who's financing it at the moment the, the, the local governments have a big budget issues obviously in the regional governments so there is a big need also to just simply uh, maintain the services that they are uh, and especially the, the NGOs that, that are doing a lot of those uh, daycare and, and uh, rehabilitation services. In Ukraine. In Ukraine. Yeah, that's my leg. I was stretching. In Ukraine. That's one thing. Um, other aspect is indeed the, the financial support that, that, that will take for a long time, also for the refugees, uh, the internally displaced people. As, as uh, Tanya just mentioned, uh, Girolo is providing those services. The other uh, uh, NGOs, but also non uh, governmental uh, institutions do receive a lot of uh, refugees in the western part of the country. Uh, and there they also see that people come in and people go, uh, go back. So there are new refugees and others going back. Uh, what we do more, what more do we do is, so still we, uh, we have started uh, together with the counterparts to do research. But, uh, it's mentioned that there's a lack of data, there's a lack, there's a scale, there's war, uh, people are in panic. We don't know where where are the services, and we have uh, worked uh, previously years on creating a system of early childhood intervention systems. There are thirty or thirty five teams before the war, and now we are uh, doing research to see where are they? Are they still there? Are they still operating? Are they involved? Are they and some are? Uh, where are the professionals? Uh, where are the families? How are they? Uh, are they still communicating? Um, uh, are they still providing the services? What are the needs for the parents? And so, and to have a good report and to know, okay, based on that report, what what will be the next uh, next activity? The last thing I, I would like to mention is that we are involved in training early childhood intervention uh, workers in their uh, resilience and how to go as professionals, as persons, first of all, <laughs> uh, with the, the whole situation, and then as professionals, how to support the families they are still working. Because I would like to stress that wherever that is possible, and uh, I'm not really, really, um, uh, what can I say, uh, I admire it, that they continue working wherever possible, the early intervention teams, they continue working with the families and they say, it's even more important than it was before the war, because there's families, Face so much stress. They are in 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 maybe in Poland, in Germany, uh, somewhere in Ukraine, uh, 
but they, they need our support. And it, it, it's cynical, but uh, the pandemic has, has helped because, because of the pandemic, uh, the early intervention centers are used to work online with families. So now it's, they can provide a service everywhere, or wherever the parents and the families are. Thank you, Eric. I will come back to Sana. A lot has been said um, about the problems and the issues. How do you see? How do you see what's been presented to you as someone who's still based in, in Ukraine? First, thank you. For everyone, for you, for your work, for our citizens, <laughs> yes. Um, and I think uh, I what about what what I hear sometimes I uh, I pick up ideas for for our government and for us. <laughs> What we should do, uh, because uh, in reality we don't know exactly the same problem. <laughs> I suppose uh, how many people with disabilities and children with disabilities are internally displaced, uh, displaced in Ukraine. Uh, for example, I know that in Lviv region, which is uh, my uh, my my region, we have. Uh, 300,000 refugees and 8,000 8, uh, are people with people, including children, yes, with disability. But uh, nobody knows uh, how many children and there are 8,000. And nobody knows uh, what type of disability in reality uh, is in each, uh, in each case, yes. Uh, and we have general, general um, view, yes, but we, uh, it needs help to understand the level of, uh, of mm, the level of quantity, but not quality, yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, in reality, uh, uh, it's a uh, need in every case. Uh, and, uh, hmm. uh, and you know, uh, the, uh, time, uh, the time is flowing, but information is not uh, to get yes, <laughs> updated in, in the we. Uh, we have uh, for uh, five months, yes, uh, but uh, we till now we don't know uh, which type of disability every person has. And it, it caused uh, the situation that, uh, to be honest, it is a task for, uh, for clients to find um, help, yes. We, 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 we try, we, we make support, we make uh, efforts to find, uh, especially children with disability in families, it is a problem, yes, to pick up these children, because when, when they are in institutions, it is uh, clear, yes, how many with, uh, with uh, each type of disability because, uh, for example, 100 children in one institution, uh, you can uh, visit and uh, know everything, and, uh, know the yeah. But in families, it's not uh, too easy. It's not easy. It's many times, uh, difficult, uh, more difficult uh, for us to understand, to find, and to. So, um, so, uh, what I think it is very good to have exchange of information. So it is absolutely, uh, absolutely required. Yes, because what we see in the uh, back part of Ukraine, and if we have uh, every week meetings uh, with uh, seven, uh, seven uh, regions of West Ukraine. Every region brings uh, 
new experience, a new question, and you answer. Yes, five or uh, what each region found. found yes. Uh, and uh, it uh, saved for us uh, our time, yes, to, to, to find solution. And, uh, it is, I think it is great, uh, great uh, situation to exchange uh, your uh, different reality, different experience. Uh, because uh, what I understand uh, um, uh, in each country, you have a different, uh, you have a temporary uh, office, yeah, offices, and they based on uh, different institutions, medical institutions, not medical, but uh, uh, it is different um, profiles. Yes, profiles. Yes, thank you. Yes, and you yes, yes, but uh, we uh, we are we are in Geo too, but. For example, my institutions work mostly with social uh, services, right? and I suppose every institution has uh, own experience uh, to to have network with different institutions, and exchanging this experience uh, is uh, critically critically could help to find You and your colleagues' commitment to continue doing it in these circumstances is very uh, inspiring and you know, it makes us all very proud also coming together and what we do. Sorry, uh, difficult to speak. Um, we have some questions maybe in the chat box. So can we open that up? No, nope, no questions in the chat box. We are coming quite quickly to an end. I might pass directly the floor to Maya, maybe for some concluding remarks. Thank you very much for uh, being here today. I, when I was listening to all of the different nuances of problems of the different regions, uh, I remembered the story from last week. Uh, as you know, I, I am trying to visit all of the temporary regional offices. I'm also hoping to arrange something in Slovakia quite soon, but I already managed to visit Moldova. I managed uh, to, to be in Hungary with Henrietta. I visited Jarelo in uh, uh, Lviv, and then I also went to Varna last week. And um, there is a, a refugee uh, base for people with disabilities near Varna, where I met uh, around 90 uh, people, mainly women uh, with different health conditions, different disabilities, uh, some of them from different parts of Ukraine. And once we were done with all of the uh, political conversations, we started just to have a very informal chat as uh, Eastern European women in somewhere near the Black Sea. And it was a very informal and nice uh, conversation. And I ended up asking them, not what ESPD can do, but like, what can I do as a person? Like, is there anything I can do for you to help? Because I will try to make sure that all of the recommendations are in all of the relevant reports that we say to the commission what we're saying, but is there anything that I can do? And they said, you know, but we actually are, uh, our days are very unhappy because what we're doing is that we're reading the news 24-7. We are on the phones with either our husbands or brothers. And it's just very difficult to be here because we have nothing to do. We cannot go get a job because some of us have epilepsy or are retired. And uh, at the end of the day, they ask me if I can bring some yarn so they can knit. And with a couple of friends, uh, this is what we did. Uh, and it, we, we bring only blue and yellow yarn and they are doing bracelets now, which is the most basic things you can imagine, but I wanted to close to that. Honestly, because I think we still have to remember we're talking about people. It is about policy making, but behind those policies, there are people. And if we don't manage to write the, the correct policy frames, 
some of the people are forgotten or some of the people are seen only as benefits receivers or as uh, people to be moved from point A to point B. And nobody functions like that. We all function as a complex being with wantings and, and needs and desires and feelings. And at the end of the day, the quality of life and the dignity of one person should not matter if they are refugee or not, if they're with a disability or not. So thank you very much for what you're doing. Magdalena, Ludmila, Trish, Henrietta, Eric, and Tatiana, thank you very much for your efforts. And uh, I hope that conversations like this one can bring a bit more light to the people who want to help. Uh, the ones who are still considering as organizations, should they know, do they know how to get involved? Please feel free to uh, write us back and uh, we'll make sure that uh, there's something for you to do because there's a lot of work. I think this is something that uh, whatever challenge we, we face in our own realities, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done. And I hope that uh, the next meeting we have will be a bit more cheerful and actually will be more with uh, the solutions that we found for the challenges to share this meeting. Thank you very much for being with us. And uh, I hope you have a, a good day from now on. We have a lot of meetings with a lot of different DGs. This is what I had of our small community of heroes today. And uh, looking forward to that as well. Thank you very much. Thank uh -huh.